One of the most essential mysteries of the universe that science has not yet been able to solve is whether life exists anywhere else in the universe besides on Earth. Scientists have tried to answer this question for years without a clear answer. There could be life out there, but if that's the case, why haven't we found it yet? If life is something normal in the universe, where is it? Why haven't we found other planets full of life like Earth? Why haven't we received radio signals from other civilizations? Or could it be that, on the contrary, life is something extraordinary and complex, and all the life that exists in the entire universe is found on Earth? Could it be that we are utterly alone in the entire universe? Join us to solve this mystery. The Berserker Hypothesis and the Dark Forest Theory Are we alone in the universe? Since we began exploring the solar system and observing the universe with telescopes, scientists have asked themselves, is there life out there? Although the universe is immense and the number of places where life could exist is immeasurable, we have not found another place outside our planet where living beings exist. It is as if life were something elusive to Earth. But when we start to analyze things carefully, some essential questions arise, such as, why did life emerge on Earth and not elsewhere? What is unique about Earth? Before we believed the Earth was an oasis, a world like no other, with unique characteristics that cannot be found anywhere else. Still, since we discovered that the stars are solar systems like ours, and that each star in the universe has planets, this belief stopped making sense. As of the creation of this video, we have discovered more than 5,000 exoplanets in our stellar neighborhood alone at least a third of which share many characteristics with our planet. Even the most conservative studies indicate that the Milky Way could host up to 6 billion Earth-like planets. That is to say, if we talk about unique things, the Earth does not seem to be a unique place in our galaxy. It is illogical to think that all the conditions that occurred on Earth could not have also occurred on some other planet in some other galaxy, from any other part of the universe. Statistics favor logic. Everything tells us that the probability of there being another planet like Earth out there is very high. If we talk about life, we come across the same problem. Every living being that inhabits our planet, from the most modest bacteria to one enormous whale, is made up of practically the same thing, CHON. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen are the four most abundant elements in a living being. More than 96% of one adult human are made of those four elements. 65% oxygen, 18% carbon, 10% hydrogen, 3% nitrogen. And the other 4% are traces of other elements such as carbon, phosphorus, and sulfur. All these elements are formed in the final stages during the death of stars and released into planetary nebulae that form planets rich in these elements. In other words, life is not made of rare, complex, or unique materials. The ingredients to make a living being are relatively easy to find anywhere in the universe and are extremely common. Furthermore, according to probability, there are hundreds of thousands of Earth-like planets where there will surely be elements like those here. So if life is something that does not require complex materials or special planets, why isn't the universe full of living beings? Why does it seem like we are entirely alone and that there is no life outside of Earth? This is known as the Fermi Paradox and the Grand Filter Theory. The Fermi Paradox consists of the apparent contradiction between estimates that there is a high probability that other intelligent civilizations exist in the known universe and the absence of evidence of such civilizations. The Great Filter prevents life from emerging from inert matter and eventually an intelligent civilization like ours. The idea suggests that in some stages of the formation of intelligent life, something suddenly stops the development of said civilization and completely extinguishes it. For example, human civilization has existed in the universe for only 2.5 million years as a species. But the most significant scientific and technological advances have occurred in the last 100 years. Among these advances is the technology that we have managed to develop to self-destruct us, the nuclear weapons. Currently, the nuclear arsenal in the world is enough to eradicate the entire human race. 
If this is the great filter that great civilizations cannot pass, it means that humanity is close to exterminating itself and with it all living beings on the planet. This would also indicate that we have not found other advanced and intelligent civilizations like us because the same thing happens to them too. It's as if once a civilization discovers how to create atomic bombs and they fail to contain their desire to use them and end up self-destructing in a senseless nuclear war. The interesting thing is that even if the human race became extinct due to a nuclear war and we devastated the entire planet, there was no way we would be able to exterminate all life forms on Earth. Throughout history, our planet has gone through much more devastating cataclysms than a simple nuclear war. Even a species as violent as humans cannot exterminate all living beings, since in the darkest corners of the caves or in the deepest crevices of the ocean, bacteria and other microorganisms that have been on this planet for billions of years would survive, resisting everything. These ultra-resistant life forms will undoubtedly survive any nuclear war. It may take hundreds or billions of years, but life will prevail even if humans destroy everything. As the years go by, the radiation would dissipate in the environment. New life forms would populate the world again, evolving to adapt to each planet's ecosystems. Some of these new species may develop great intelligence again and be the planet's new ruler. Life seems to be something very resilient that expands to fill all available ecological niches and that cannot be exterminated so easily. On our planet, life will continue to exist no matter what we do. The only thing that can change that is our star. When the sun runs out of fuel and dies, life on Earth will too. Meanwhile, no matter what happens, whether a meteorite falls or a race of intelligent apes destroys the entire surface with nuclear bombs, life will always re-emerge among the ashes and it will evolve to adapt to all ecosystems on Earth. Suppose this scenario is similar to other planets in the universe. In that case, it means that if life also emerged on another planet very distant, billions of light years from Earth, these life forms are still there waiting to be discovered or have even evolved to such a degree that they are also looking for us. So why haven't we found them? For years, scientists asked themselves these questions and thanks to this, we arrived at different hypotheses, which we will talk about. The Dark Forest The Dark Forest hypothesis is that there are many alien civilizations throughout the universe, but they are silent and paranoid. This is explained so that any spacefaring civilization would view any other intelligent life as an inevitable threat and destroy any nascent life that makes its presence known. In other words, if a civilization is aware of its ability to destroy other living beings, it will believe that the rest of the civilizations are also just as dangerous as them. Therefore, it is best not to contact them since they would enter a war where both of them fight and are destroyed. As a result, all civilizations would eventually learn to hide and the electromagnetic spectrum would be relatively silent with no evidence of any intelligent extraterrestrial life as in a dark forest full of armed hunters lurking among the trees like a ghost, observing without being observed. This would explain why, although we searched for signatures of life throughout the universe, we found nothing. Maybe it's because we're the only ones looking and no one emits detectable signals. Before moving on, be sure to like or dislike the video so that we can improve them for you, the viewer. Plus, don't forget to subscribe to our channel by making sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our daily videos. Berserker Hypothesis In the context of extraterrestrial civilizations, there is a type of spacecraft called von Neumann ships, also known as self-replicating spacecraft. This type of spacecraft, as its name indicates, is characterized by being a spacecraft that can collect materials from any celestial body to create more copies of itself imitating the operation of an intelligent 3D printer that would be able to make predetermined decisions programmed so that when it finds a celestial body with valuable materials, it would simply land on that body and begin mining it to create more copies. Given this behavior and its similarity to the reproduction pattern of bacteria, several authors have expressed that von Neumann machines could be considered a mechanical, not biological form of life. In his short story, Lungfish, David Brin, 
touches on this idea, pointing out that self-replicating machines launched by different species could compete for the materials of celestial bodies. Given a sufficient variety of species, they could even form a type of ecology, or if they also had some form of artificial intelligence, a society. In this way, the ships could mutate over thousands of generations, slightly changing the objectives for which they were initially programmed. There are many variants of self-replicating ships, but the topic that matters to us today is the Berserker ships. These types of spacecraft are a variant of the von Neumann probes, programmed to search for and exterminate life forms and exoplanets capable of supporting life as they are detected by these spacecraft. The Berserker hypothesis arises as a response to the Fermi paradox. It explains that if humans have not yet detected intelligent extraterrestrial life in the universe, it is because it has been systematically destroyed by a series of lethal Berserker-type von Neumann probes that were created by an extraterrestrial life very ancient and programmed with the sole purpose of exterminating all traces of life in the universe and then self-destructing once they've wiped out life on that planet. In his 1983 article, The Great Silence, astronomer David Brin summarized the terrifying implications of the Berserker hypothesis, saying that it is fully compatible with all the facts and logic of the Fermi paradox. Still, it would mean that no life left intelligent to discover exists, since the probes have been responsible for exterminating all life forms in the galaxy as they appear. In the worst case, humanity has already alerted these ships of our existence and we are the next to be destroyed. Something interesting about these types of spacecraft is that the race that created them probably no longer exists. However, the ships they created continue replicating themselves, exterminating all life forms in the universe, causing terror even when their creators disappeared millions of years ago. Berserker probes exist? A vital component of the hypothesis is that a berserker probe has not yet visited Earth's solar system. A 2013 analysis by Anders Sandberg and Stuart Armstrong at the Future of Humanity Institute at the University of Oxford predicted that if a small fleet of berserker probes were able to destroy civilizations elsewhere, even very slowly, they would most likely have encountered Earth by now and destroyed all traces of life millions of years ago. In 1981, Frank Tipler proposed that if we assume even a moderate rate of replication and the history of the galaxy we live in, Self-replicating space probes should already be seen in space, and thus we should have found them by now. But because we have not found them, this shows that extraterrestrial intelligence does not exist and that we are the only intelligent beings in the universe. Another answer to the Fermi paradox is that we are first. Suppose the human race is the first species to have this degree of intelligence and technological advances. In that case, no matter how much we look for other extraterrestrial species, we will not find them since they still do not have telecommunications technologies and are unaware of radio waves. If this is the case, we will have to wait several hundreds or thousands of years to detect the first signs of another intelligent civilization besides us. But in the end, the last answer lies with you, our viewer. We want to know what you think. Do you think humanity is the first intelligent civilization to appear in the universe? Or are there many more out there? But are they hiding, afraid of being detected by other alien races like us? Could it be that an army of self-replicating spaceships has been tasked with exterminating all life forms in the galaxy? And are we the next to be destroyed? Let us know your opinion in the comments.